Nah, bruh. No. Uh-uh. This is actual peak. No, I'm sorry. This is actual peak. We are feasting. bro. we finally got info for the units that we're going to be getting in the first part of the 2023 Legends Festival. And, bruh, we are feasting. So the Dragon Ball Legends reveals and stuff, Legends Festival Edition 2023 has just ended in bruh. Look, all the events that are going to be coming to the game and all that stuff is it, going to be nice. I, I There was too much to cover in this video, but I will say that there are a ton of opportunities for people to get crystals throughout the entirety of the Legends Festival. So that's good, right? That's fantastic. However, the units that we're going to be getting, I'm so freaking excited, bruh. Like one of which was kind of obvious but the other one i almost lost my voice i almost lost my voice so i'm gonna stop talking because of course i recorded my reaction so check out my reaction and then we're gonna break all of that down okay so it's continuing off of that trailer that they uh showed on twitter okay I mean, it's like it's it's obvious that it's universe survival saga. It has to be. Okay. Yeah. So we saw all of this. What? A battle between the strongest across all universes awaits, of course. It's time. It is with that heat. Yep, Golden Frieza. I knew it. I was like, it's Golden Frieza. It, I knew it was Golden Frieza. Now he's he's gonna be clean. Dang. Oh my God. Okay, Frieza. Yep, I knew it. I knew he was at attack. Oh, whoa. Hold on, wait. What's the matter, plaything? Are you not having fun yet? Okay, Frieza, hold on. Yeah! <laughs> it's time. It's time for that fire. It's time for that heat. Let's freaking go. Yo. Nah. No, it's time. They going No, they they're going to go crazy. It's time. Like I've waited too long for this unit. Gone. What? It's time. I've waited too long for this, bro. Gone. Send him out. Bro, yeah, this is what I'm talking about, bro. Gone. Send him out! He is gone! Nah, I waited too long for this, bro. Yes, sir! <laughs> I'm so freaking excited, bro. I'm so freaking hyped for this. Let's freaking go! Bruh. Oh, no, they got some more heat. Hold on. Wait. Wait, vet! Oh, go takes from superhero! No! Whoa! I I mean I I've actually wanted him in the game for a while. He's like a perfect meme character. Ultimate Gohan? Let's freaking go! <laughs> Ultimate Gohan finally! No, bro, it's time. No, it's, it's time. It's time. I, like, we finally get Superhero Ultimate Gohan in the game. What? Hey, what the? No. No. <laughs> it's Transformer. Guess it's my turn. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! No! <laughs> Yo! 
no, 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 I want that. I want. No, bro. No, it's time. It's time. It's time. What the? I'm so freaking excited, bro. Oh my goodness. Like, this is just part one. This is just the beginning. We have no idea what's in store for the rest of the Legends Festival yet. So I'm freaking hyped, but whew, okay, I gotta calm down. All right, let's actually break down what they can do. So starting off with Golden Freeze Up, which this was the unit that was hinted from the cryptic message from a few days ago with the Disco Ball and all that stuff, right? So of course it shows Golden Frieza sparking yellow units, range type, and their tags are Frieza Force, Otherworld Warrior, Transforming Warrior, Lineage of Evil, and Universe Rep. And remember, because of the fact that Frieza was not in an antagonistic role in the Tournament of Power, he is not gonna be a part of Powerful Opponent. So just remember that, or at least for newer players who don't know that, he wasn't in an antagonistic role, so he was he's not gonna be a part of Powerful Opponent unless you put him in the leader slot. Anyway, Z ability three plus 30% to tag Universe Rep, tag Lineage of Evil, or tag Frieza Force base strike attack and blast attack and plus 15% to tag universe rep base blast defense during battle, okay? Unique abilities. Applies the following effects to self when battle starts. Plus 90% to damage inflicted cannot be canceled. Reduces damage received by 70% cannot be canceled. Plus 60% to key recovery cannot be canceled. Increases arts card draw speed by one level cannot be canceled. And minus 10 to blast arts cost cannot be canceled. So really, really powerful. Um, he's gonna come out the gate swinging. Uh, he takes less damage. Again, he pr practically knocks it down by 70%, which is really good. It gives him decent survivability. Not only that, he has good key recovery, so you'll be able to keep your combos going for a while. He gets Arts Card draw speed, so that's adding on top of being able to keep your combo going. And your Blast Arts costs get knocked down by 10, which means that it's the same amount as your Strike Arts, which is fantastic. The only thing that you would have to look out for just in a general retrospect is like if Ultra Super Janeba is going to be cover changing in, because of course he has blast cover, so you want to be careful of that. But apart from that, though, sounds pretty good so far. Moving on to the ultimate arts. Deals massive impact damage. The following effects occur on hit. 100% chance to inflict paralyze, which is going to be very, very annoying. Inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade minus 30% to special move, ultimate, and awaken art power for 10 timer counts. So that's good. You weaken them. Pretty much all their heavy hitting moves you weaken, which is fantastic. Inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade minus one arts card draw speed level for 10 timer counts. Inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade plus five to all arts costs for 10 timer counts. Inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade plus two to substitution count for 10 timer counts. Blast armor when charging forward. So with your ultimate attack, it has blast armor, which is fantastic. And of course, you're guaranteed to inflict um, paralysis unless like uh, the character is like immune to like those type of like um, status effects and all that stuff. And not only that, you knock down their special move damage, you knock down their ultimate damage, you knock down their awakened arts, um, but there's not really many units in the game that use awakened arts nowadays. So, uh, which is, it's still good though. Like you get to cripple the opponent and plus you slow down their combo. You actually, you slow down their combo by raise or lowering uh, their arts card draw speed by one. And then on top of that, you add five to their arts cost, which is gonna make it even harder for them to uh, keep their combo going. And you also add plus two to their sub count as well. So swapping in and out with characters is gonna be difficult for them. So really good ultimate arts, really good ultimate arts. Unique abilities. The following effects occur if own remaining health is 50% or below after being hit by an enemy's arts attack while this character is on the battlefield. Activates once, destroys all of your enemy's cards, reduces enemy key by 100 and inflicts all enemies with no switching for five timer counts. Now, uh, there, I will say by default, there's gonna be a few characters that are gonna be immune to some of these abilities. One of which that I can think of off the top of my head is um, Ultra Super Janemba. He should be immune to the key reduction because of the fact that, again, like for example, like they built him to kind of get around not only Vegito, but also the likes of both like Pan and Zamasu, where if you attack them consistently, you're gonna lose key. He's immune to all of that. So like all, all, right off the jump, like it's, he's gonna be immune to the key reduction. Everything else, you know, that's 
still to, you know, it could be effective. But in a general retrospect, like putting Janemba outside of this equation, that's still a really powerful ability. You pretty much stop your uh, opponent's combo because you knock down their cards and you knock down their key. So pretty much they have to either, oh, and there's no switching. So the only saving grace that they would ever have is if they have a unit that's immune to any of those abilities or if they have not popped their main ability and their main force draws a card and gives them enough key to use it. So apart from that though, they're sitting ducks. That is a really good unique ability all around. Like, and also just the fact that he's a yellow unit. Oh my goodness, thank, thank the Lord. Okay, moving on to special arts. Draw the ultimate arts card, Laser Net Death Beam next, activates once. Yes, this unit has two ultimate attacks, two of them. So that's gonna be very interesting. Anyway, restore his own health by 15% and key by 50. So again, you get some health back and you're guaranteed to be able to use ultimate arts because ultimate arts cost like a lot, right? Plus 20% to damage inflicted for 15 timer counts, plus 10% to ultimate damage inflicted cannot be canceled, activates once, minus 10 to own special move arts cost cannot be canceled, activates twice. So uh, pretty much if you pop a special skill, you get an ultimate attack guaranteed, uh, you heal up, you get key, and on top of that, you deal extra damage. And plus you also boost your special move damage on top of all of that. So yeah, if you have a special skill, I would say just pop it immediately. Anyway, moving on. Special move arts, deals massive pierce damage, applies the following effects to self upon activation, plus 30% to special move damage inflicted for three timer counts, and plus 20% to ultimate damage inflicted, cannot be canceled, activates once. So if you use your special move, apart from the pierce damage, you're gonna be dealing extra damage with your special move and you'll also boost up your ultimate attack. So if you have a special skill and you have the opportunity to use your special move, you might wanna kind of like pair those together. I would say probably like have a scenario where you're actually able to use your special move first and then afterwards pop your special skill just cause you don't want anything to knock down that ultimate. Um, ultimate attack card so th th that's just my suggestion but i mean you know and then of course applies the following effects to enemy on a hit randomly destroys two cards and 100 percent chance to inflict heavy bleed so yeah if you land the ult they get paralyzed if you land your special move they bleed and they lose cards wow so he's like a saboteur of sorts but also still focusing on range damage which is pretty cool and then finally we have his you know the rest of his unique abilities has a special cover change against strike arts attacks uh comboable with special move arts so yeah strike cover you can follow up with your special move the following effects occur when changing cover reduces enemies dragon balls by one activates once which will be annoying but hey it helps inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade minus one arts card draw speed level for 10 timer counts inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade minus 15 percent to strike and blast arts power for 10 timer counts so if you cover change with frieza Regardless of if it's, you know, strike cover or whatever the case may be, you knock down a Dragon Ball, you lower the arts card draw speed, so their combo will slow down. And then, of course, you weaken their power. So even if their combo is still going, they're not going to be hitting as hard as they normally would have. So, yeah, I mean, all around, he sounds like a really good yellow unit. The downside with all that is that could give Vegito a bit more, like, viability again because a lot of people are gonna be running like universe rep again, more than likely. And Vegito is probably gonna run through this Frieza like effortlessly. So, and it's just cause I mean, that unit is just cracked. So, I mean, I'm not saying golden Frieza is bad. Like him being a yellow unit is good because it can kind of shut down Goku and Frieza a little bit, but you do have to use him very carefully just to, you know, because Vegito blue exists. So there's that. All right, now we get to the first headliner. Finally, we get Super Saiyan Blue Evolved Vegeta and Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku, the tag unit that we've all been waiting for. However, this is honestly a good and kind of like a bittersweet uh, sweet thing, and I'll explain in literally just a few seconds. So, we have, uh, you know, tag Super Saiyan Blue Evolved Vegeta and Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku. They're green and reverse green. So they're going back to like the pure element factors with the swap gauge. Now this is a good and a bad thing all at the same time. With this element factor, they do counter Goku and Frieza. They absolutely do. The downside is you have to build up to that point. 
What I mean by that is, of course, Goku's purple and Frieza is blue. So that means Vegeta would cover Frieza and Goku, well, would cover Goku. But you start off with Vegeta, who's a green unit. So you have to build up that gauge first in order to swap uh, Goku in to cover Goku. And then that way, hopefully, if you're able to get things to go in your favor, then you can have, uh, you know, Goku stay up against Goku and then Vegeta go up against Frieza. So it'll be interesting to see how that works, but hopefully it works out well. Because in truth, again, it's not bad that they're green and reverse green, but it's not the best at the same time. Like, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Anyway, so they are a sparking range type and their tags are Vegeta Clan, Saiyan, God Key, Super Saiyan Blue, and Universe Rep and Sun Family. And also, this is the first tag unit that we have of Goku and Vegeta that we actually start off with Vegeta. So that's pretty cool. All right, putting all that to the side, Z Ability 3 plus 30% to tag Universe Rep, tag Vegeta Clan, or tag Sun Family base blast attack and strike defense, and plus 15% to tag God Key base strike attack during battle. And then limited Z Ability 3, because remember, this is a new thing that will boost your team. Increases the following stats of allies when this character is a battle member. So remember this, because this is new, so I want to make sure this is clear. Limited Z abilities are what help boost your team. The whole team that are battle members. So again, if you have an LF unit and you don't have them in the battle, their limited Z ability does not activate. They have to be in battle. Anyway, plus 7% to base strike attack and defense and plus 7% uh, to base blast attack and defense. So general general buff, but hey, it's something brand new that'll help out the team. So I'm not complaining. Now we get unique abilities. Slightly charges own unique gauge every time this character uses an arts card while they're on the battlefield. Once the unique gauge is full, it resets to zero and applies the following effects to self. So of course, you know, they have a unique gauge and once it hits zero, randomly draws at most three new cards when you have three or fewer cards, which is good, so you replenish your hand. Restores key by 40, so you should have enough key to be able to use something. Plus 20% to damage inflicted cannot be canceled, activates once. Activation count is shared between Vegeta and Goku. So it doesn't matter if you have Goku or Vegeta in, once that unique gauge fills up and resets to zero, that plus 20% to damage inflicted uh, effect takes effect. It doesn't matter who's in. Plus 20% to damage inflicted for 15 timer counts. Plus 50% to unique gauge charge rate cannot be canceled, activates twice. Activation count is shared between Vegeta and Goku. So same situation with the plus 20% to damage inflicted, but that's going to be very, very important because that means every single time your unique gauge full, uh, fills up, the next time it will fill up faster. So that's going to be insane. That means like getting like all of the benefits of unique gauge filling you should be able to get that consistently throughout the battle, which is going to be insane. And then, of course, applies buff effect, nullifies enemies, special actions that activate when changing cover for 10 timer counts. So when it fills up, you nullify cover change for 10 timer counts. So there, there's that. Okay, moving on to the switch ability. The following effects occur when Goku uses the switch ability. Tag switch to Vegeta, of course. Reverses old element factors. So again, from Goku to Vegeta, you'll be going from reverse green to green. Applies attribute upgrade minus 15% to enemy sustained damage cut effects to self for 15 timer counts. Inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade plus 15% to blast damage received for 15 timer counts. Requirements max switch gauge. So again, when you swap to Vegeta, you're going to be dealing extra blast damage pretty much. Like you're cutting down their sustained damage and you're also um, cutting down um, their blast resistance. So again, you have Vegeta in, throw out blast arts, you're going to be dealing damage. The following effects occur when Vegeta uses the switch ability. Tag switch to Goku, so you'll be going from green to reverse green. Reverse his own element factors. Plus 10% to own health restoration for 15 timer counts. Applies attribute upgrade. Shortens substitution count by 2 to self for 15 timer counts. Nullifies own attribute downgrades and abnormal conditions for 10 timer counts. That's actually pretty nice. Uh, especially with uh, Frieza being, you know, able to either make you bleed guaranteed or paralyze you guaranteed. Swapping to Goku would actually help out with that a ton. So there is that. So it seems like Vegeta is offense and Goku is defense, which is weird because it's usually the other way around, but hey, I'm not complaining. And then finally we have uh, more unique abilities. 
applies the following effects to self when this character is switched to standby. This is very important. I want, I want y'all to pay attention to this. Restores health by 10%, which is nice. Charges switch gauge by 100%. What in the world? So let's say that uh, you're in an unfavorable uh, scenario, right? Let's say that you're up against uh, Goku and Frieza, right? And man, like you gotta get, uh, you know, Vegeta out, right? Because obviously Goku will destroy him. So then you have a unit in and maybe that Goku's not able to land a hit or really get to use any arts cards, right? And for whatever reason, you're able to get Vegeta back in. Your switch gauge is full. You can immediately swap to Goku. And again, Goku is reverse green, which means he has complete coverage against, you know, the other Goku, the purple unit. So at that point, you can probably get things to work in your favor. That's really nice. And it activates twice. So if you're in an unfavorable uh, scenario, you'll be able to swap immediately, which is pretty, pretty nice. And then switch ability applies the following effects to self based on own remaining health. Health is 50% or more, restores health by 10%, restores key by 30, which is nice. Health is below 50%, draw a special move arts card next, activates once, restores health by 20%, Restores key by 50, which are nice abilities. That's pretty nice. And of course, remember that these, like Vegeta and Goku, they are an LF unit. You'll be able to activate their LF by using their special move. So yeah, that is incredible. But that is only the first half of what we're getting because they hit us with that heat afterwards. Was not expecting this whatsoever. I, th this is why I think I'm about to lose my voice. Not only are we getting Universe Survival Saga, we're getting sagas from the movies with more superhero. And I'm hyped for both of these characters because one is their debut in a 3D Dragon Ball game. I think period, because I don't even think they're in, uh, I don't even think they're in Heroes, they probably are. But anyway, we get into the second half of part one and it is superhero themed. We have Gotenks, the failed fusion of Gotenks. So, Gotenks, he is, of course, a sparking unit. He is a yellow uh, unit, and he's a defense type, which makes a lot of sense. Tags are hybrid, Saiyan, Fusion, and Fusion Warrior. Z ability 3, plus 30% to episode sagas from the movies. Tag hybrid Saiyan or tag Fusion Warrior, base strike and blast defense, and plus 15% to characters that are both episode sagas from the movies, and tag hybrid Saiyan, base strike attack during battle. And then unique abilities, Shortens own substitution count by one as default, which is nice. Applies the following effects to self when this character enters the battlefield. Draw a special arts card next, activates once, restores key by 30, plus 50% to damage inflicted cannot be stacked, cannot be canceled, and increases arts card draw speed by one level for 15 timer counts. So, yeah, this character has viability apart from just being defensive. I mean, they get a special arts card, which is fantastic. Uh, they restore key, which is obviously good, especially to be able to keep your combo going. You get to boost your damage, even though it can't be stacked, it can't be canceled either. And your arts card draw speed goes up by a level, which is fantastic. And again, it's it applies when the character enters the battlefield and it doesn't show any limitations on that. So that's gonna be kinda nice. Okay, so now we have unique abilities. The following effects occur when changing cover. Reduces damage received by 10% until combo ends. That's nice. Nullifies own unfavorable element factors for damage sustained for five timer counts, which will help out against red units. Plus 30% to damage inflicted by allies for 20 timer counts. Randomly destroys one enemy card, activates twice. Randomly destroys one enemy card. So um, that is a total of three times. So that's gonna be interesting. Um, yeah, cause well, actually, no, because it shows activates twice for one of them, but then afterwards it has it underneath. So, okay, so for the first two times, you'll knock down two cards, and then after the second time, you'll only knock down one card. So I had to make sure like I understood that properly, but it's still a nice ability. Has a special cover change against strike attacks. Their, their strike cards covered, like, it, it's really freaking funny. We all know what, what it was. So uh, there's that. The following effects occur when performing a special cover change. Shortens allies' substitution counts by five, activates twice. So you'll be able to swap them out immediately, hopefully. Obscures all enemies' cards for five timer counts, which means that if you land your uh, strike cover, 
you get to completely, like, your opponent is blind pretty much. They have, I mean, they'll probably know what cards they have, but they will not know in what order they will be, which will be nice. It activates, oh, no, it doesn't activate twice. Sorry, I read the wrong line, but yeah, it happens every single time. It even explains afterwards, all cards are turned face down for the effect duration and their positions are shuffled. So again, they will be completely blind for five timer counts. Reduces enemies' Dragon Balls by one, activates once, and inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade minus 100% to key recovery for 10 timer counts. That's going to be interesting. So that means units that heal with their main ability, heal over time, whatever the case may be, you're not going to heal anything. So there's that. Moving on to more unique abilities, the following effects occur when own health reaches zero, activates once, restores own health by 30%. This unit has endurance. Not only do they have endurance, shortens ally substitution counts by 10, which means if you activate their endurance, they can immediately swap out. And not only that, reduces enemy key by, by 100. So he has endurance. If his endurance is activated, the opponent's combo is pretty much over unless they have something that can keep it going on. Their sub counts get knocked down by 10 for your um, team. So that means you can swap them out immediately. Like what the heck? This unit's sounding pretty good. The following effects occur if own remaining health is 50% or below after being hit by an enemy's arts attack while this character is on the battlefield. Activates once. Restores own health by 20%. Gradually restores own health each timer count for 30 timer counts. And shortens ally substitution counts by 10. So, for a defense type, you're going to be kind of wanting to swap him out of battle constantly. Just because he has multiple opportunities to get your teammates back in which is fantastic. And then we have special arts, reduces enemy key by 30. Wow, that's the special skill. You reduce their key by 30. Again, Janemba should be immune to that, but apart from him, and obviously like some other units probably, th th that's gonna be a powerful ability. Reduces enemies Dragon Balls by one, activates once, they'll be annoying, but it's still good. Cancels enemy attribute upgrades, which is fantastic. Inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade, plus 10 to all arts costs for five timer counts and inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade minus one arts card draw speed level for 10 timer counts. Pretty much, he's there to shut down combos and leave. That's about it, which is still good, which is still good. And then main ability restores own key by 50, which is fantastic. It means you can use any card in the game apart from varying circumstances, plus 30% to damage inflicted cannot be canceled, plus 30% to uh, the next special move damage inflicted cannot be canceled, takes your opponent's Dragon Balls and adds them to your own. Effect will change according to how many Dragon Balls they possess. One or more, take one, gain one. None, gain one. So it's pretty much like the Demon King Piccolo main ability, but I mean, well, okay. If, in terms of the Dragon Balls anyway, it's like the Demon King main ability or Demon King Piccolo main ability, not as good because Demon King Piccolo is able to take more than just one, but still being able to steal Dragon Balls from the opponent is good, like regardless. And plus, requirements, five timer counts must elapse, which means within the first, or not within, but after the first five timer counts of battle, it's ready to go. It's ready to go. So that's gonna be really good. He, he actually doesn't sound bad. But now we get into peak. Okay, we, we, we gonna talk about him. All right, our GOAT. We got a brand new Gohan from Superhero. And y'all know why I'm excited. Gohan's my favorite character, but we, we gonna talk about it. We gonna talk about it. So it is Ultimate Gohan. He's a Legends Limited unit, of course. He's a red unit, melee type, and tags are Sun Family and Hybrids. Again, this is the first Ultimate Gohan we've gotten from Superhero in Legends. Because of course we've had a few Ultimate Gohans in, you know, Legends. This is the first one from Superhero, which means we have all iterations of actually no there's one iteration of gohan we're missing and that's super saiyan but i digress from superhero specifically anyway z ability 3 plus 30 percent to episode sagas from the movies tag hybrid saiyan or tag sun family base strike attack and defense and plus 15 percent to characters that are both episode sagas from the movies and tag hybrid saiyan base blast attack during battle so um yeah you're pretty much gonna want to be using him on either sagas from the movies or hybrids i mean preferably both because you have, what, Pan there? So, I mean, that could kind of put her back on, honestly. Legends Z, or I forgot, Limited Z Ability 3. I was thinking of it as Legends Limited. Anyway, 
Increases the following stats of allies when this character is a battle member. Plus 7% uh, percent to base, strike attack, and defense. Plus 7% to base, blast attack, and defense. So, again, it's a new ability that'll help out your team, which is fantastic point blank. Now, moving on to unique abilities. Slightly charges own unique gauge every time an ally is hit with an enemy's art attack. Okay, um, so he has a defensive unique gauge. Huh. All right. And also, it, like, you know what? I I'm not going to spoil it. We we we're going to continue. But anyway, uh, he has a defensive unique gauge. So every time your allies are attacked, his unique gauge goes up. The following effects occur once unique gauge is full. Activates once. Nullifies own unfavorable element factors for damage sustained for 30 timer counts. Restores ally health by 15%. Shortens ally substitution counts by 10 and reduces enemies dragon balls by one that's good that's good so right off the bat even though he's a melee type he sounds pretty defensive which is not bad that's definitely not bad and then we have the main ability y'all already know what time it is boy all right main ability transform into beast <laughs> we have an lf transforming beast go up Yes! I'm so freaking happy, bro. All right, whew. I gotta calm down. Restores own health by 30% and key by 50. Reduces impact and slice damage received by 30% for 20 timer counts and cancels own attribute downgrades and abnormal conditions. So pretty much, you're transforming a beast and you're ready to throw hands. But this is also the first transforming unit that we've had that they actually start off with a unique gauge. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I'm, because I'm pretty sure that's what uh, they said in the reveals and stuff. I'm pretty sure I'm correct about that. But uh, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comment section below. If unique gauge is full, resets own unique gauge to zero and the following effects occur. Draw a special arts card next. Charges own unique gauge by 100. Destroys all of your enemy's cards. Reduces enemy vanishing gauge to zero. Wow. So that means that if your unique gauge is full then the character either has to throw out Rising Rush or swap. Wow, or pop their main ability if they have like, you know, a main ability that gives them like, uh, maybe like an ultimate attack or something. But um, pretty much, if your unique gauge is full when you transform, the opponent is on straight defense. So that's gonna be insane. If unique gauge is not full, resets own unique gauge to zero and charges it by 30%, which is still nice. Requirements, 20 ti uh, 25 timer counts must elapse. So that's still a pretty powerful ability. Still pretty powerful. Now we get to unique abilities or more unique abilities. Uh, rapidly charges own unique gauge according to key charge time. Oh. Oh, he's one of them. Oh, he's one of them. Oh, God. Uh, like uh, off, off the top of my head. Uh, what, what was another unit that charges the unique gauge that way? Uh, Ultra Super Saiyan Blue Kyle Ken Goku. He was one that charges it that way. Oh, so you gotta be really careful with his unique gauge. It's not gonna be a fun time every time he gets charged up. Anyway, rapidly charges own unique gauge according to key charge time while this character is on the battlefield. Applies the following effects to self once unique gauge is full. Restores key by 50. Increases arts card draw speed by one level for 20 timer counts. Cannot be stacked, cannot be canceled. Nullifies unfavorable element factors. For uh, 10 timer counts, activates three times. Wow, that's going to be insanely powerful. Holy. Okay, moving on to special move arts. Deals massive impact damage. Applies the following effects to self upon activation. Restores vanishing gauge by 70%, activates three times. Plus 40% to special move damage inflicted for three timer counts. Nullifies enemies, restores health when it reaches zero effects. When this character attacks for three timer counts. And that's just the special move. This special move nullifies endurance, restores your vanishing gauge, and helps you deal extra damage. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. If unique gauge is full, resets own unique gauge to zero and applies the following effects to self upon activation. Randomly draws one new card, increases drag malls by one, applies attribute upgrade minus 30% to enemy sustained damage cut effects for three timer counts. Blast armor and charging forward. Of course, it's beast gone. If he didn't have blast armor, that wouldn't make any sense. And then special arts. Draw a special move arts card next. Activates twice. Oh my goodness. His special skill draws a special move. Wow. 
Restore his own health by 10% and key by 50. You can use any card in the game and you heal. Plus 20% to damage inflicted for 15 timer counts. Destroys all of your enemy's special arts cards. Which will actually be really good against the likes of Rosé now that I think about it. Inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade. Minus 30% to health restoration for 30 timer counts. That is really powerful. And then unique abilities. The following effects occur when enemy activates a special move arts, ultimate arts, awakened arts, or rising rush while this character is on the battlefield. Charges own unique gauge by 50%, plus 20% to allies health restoration for 3 timer counts, shortens allies substitution count by 4, inflicts enemy with attribute downgrade, minus 40% to special move, ultimate, and awakened arc power for 3 timer counts, cancels enemies buff effects. Oh my goodness. Pretty much, Sagas from the movies is going to be darn near unrushable. They're going to be darn near unrushable. You cancel their buff effect. Okay, one prevalent thing about Rising Rush in this current meta is the fact that the likes of Ultra Vegito Blue, they're, he's able to nullify endurance by using Rising Rush. Sagas from the movies has now, like this beast Gohan, right? They also have um, the Revival Piccolo, who has Revival just. So it's just a good defensive um, ability, period. And then also, they have Ultra Super Janemba, who also nullifies buff effects when, like, either uh, Ultimate Attack or Rising Rush is activated. So you know what that means? If you try to rush this Gohan, you can immediately either throw in Piccolo, or if you have Janemba in, you can still throw in Piccolo. Th this team is going to be darn near unrushable. Holy! Like, this is absolutely insane. And to top it all off, like, th that's not even the end. We get our free-to-play unit, and the free-to-play unit is going to be Piccolo from Superhero, but when he infiltrated the Red Ribbon Army base. And when you get the unit, you'll still have the opportunity to get uh, that outfit for Shallot, which is fantastic. And we're getting another Zenkai unit, and that Zenkai unit is none other than God of Destruction, Topo. So, whew, this was a long video, but... We finally got through all of the very important information concerning part one of the Legends Festival for 2023. I am so excited. This, this is a lot of stuff that we had to go through, but this is insane. This is a phenomenal start, and I'm hoping that part two and part three are either going to carry on the hype or surpass it somehow, some way. But this is a phenomenal start. This is absolutely incredible. We finna be some broke boys. I'm letting y'all know right now, we are broke boys. Come tomorrow. It's time. But I do want to know what you guys think about all of this information in the comment section below. But with that being said, I'm Kuba. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.